Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be playing around with some vintage artwork inspired by the Artist Almanac 2024. So I'm starting off in my um, craft journal and I'm using some very, very old pieces of ephemera that I found a long time ago at an estate sale in Ireland. Um, so it's old wheels and ledgers um, that I picked up at a, a um, antique market. I love collecting things like that. Uh, it just, you cannot, even though you can age paper, you just cannot replicate that authenticness of um, the way the paper folds and creases and the, the watermarks and stuff on it. So I really love incorporating it into my um, work. And to be honest, um, a little goes a long way. You don't need to use much. But like I've had that, um, these bits and pieces for over 20, well, I've got them in 2003. So they've been in my stash for a long time. So I would highly encourage you that if, if you have estate sales or um, things like that around, go have a look and see if you can find some vintage books or vintage texts. I always feel that... Um, Sometimes I think, oh, do I want to use this? Do I not want to use this? But in in the long run, you're giving them a, a bit of a viewing again. They would have been thrown out long ago. At least they're getting a second life now and people get to enjoy them again. So um, sometimes I used to feel a little bit guilty about it, but I don't so much anymore these days. So on to this piece. Um, it's inspired by the little piece you can see on the... Um, right hand side so this is the artist almanac it's got 19 different artists um, artwork in it and there's a new piece of art each day and in January I decided I would do a piece a page inspired by each piece using color schemes or themes or techniques from it just to try and expand my um, techniques I suppose I was in a bit of a rut I've been struggling a bit to get into my um, studio so this is a really great way to sort of get me back in there and get me back working again purples aren't usually a color I would use I would have to say and certainly with a vintage text in the background like this I wouldn't put these colors with it so I was really enjoying being pushed out of my comfort zone but there was safety in it because I had something I could sort of see worked so I knew that I wasn't too far out of what would work and what wouldn't if that makes sense <laughs> probably doesn't um, so I'm just fiddling around I've added some gesso I've scribed into the gesso um, I've added some of the metallic um, distress crayons I think they're a seasonal one they've got a bit of a um, pearlescent look to them adding a little bit of um, mark making with my Stabilo oil pencil and um, yeah just generally having fun on the page also going in this is um, similar to the distress crayons I think this is the Jane Davenport crayons same type of thing just different company um, to get that sort of depth of color on the page um, I have found a lot of people sort of ask do you find that these things smear on your pages to be honest once they're kind of dry I haven't had too much issue with anything going on to the other page which has been really good obviously if you heat set or use your um, heat gun on your pages or if I put it on the next page and heated it up it would possibly transfer a little bit so just be careful about that because um, it remelts the wax um, but in most cases it's, it's actually not been an issue so that's been really really good I was finding the purple was a bit too purple um, so I've just muted it down a little bit with the um, fuchsia colour um, and I also did some ghosting with the stencil and then I've decided I'll go over with um, the gesso and the stencil over the top too but you can see I'm still not 
100% happy with it. So I'm going back in. This is a little bit of um, olive. Olive's a really um, clever colour. Uh, it's got quite yellow tones and almost goes um, neonish. It, it's very much more of a glaze, I suppose, than some of the other colours in the range, um, which I quite like. So I'm just playing around, building stuff up and, and seeing what works and what doesn't. Um, going back over with my Stabilo oil pencil, adding some more mic making, just playing around, um, trying to get the lid off my gloss spray. Splatter makes everything look a bit better. Um, and using some of the similar colours, so using some gilt, using some olive. Um, so I've got repetition of colour on the page, and I think that's really important. If you're trying to tie everything together, um, make sure you're repeating some of the things they've done previously, whether it's patterns or whether it's um, colours and so on. So just to sort of make it a little bit more grungy, going in with some stamping, adding a little bit of that fine black onto the page to get my finished piece. I was sort of tossing up whether I wanted to put um, a quote on this page as well, um, but in the end I decided not to, which I'm actually really glad I didn't. It um, really appealed to me the way it was and I again it's sort of breaking out of my habits like my habit would be to usually put a quote on the page so by not putting on the page that pushed me out of my comfort zone as well so to finish off this piece I'll tape the um, inspiration piece down into the corner of my page because I like to have that reference um, on my um, in my book as well just so I can see where the idea came from and how it inspired me. So this is a close-up. You can see that vintage text in the background. You can see the mic making, the really fine, delicate ones, the larger squirrels, um, swirls with the Stabilo pencil and so on, um, creating sort of those chunky looks, that um, glazing with the green. It all came together in the end, and it was a really great learning um, session for me. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.